periodic updates and you're, all, you're constantly sending them in, it's filling, finding the least common denominator and making that a template. So various email clients have different methods for saving a template. Um, Outlook offers ways to save templates and they're easily accessible. Um, Google offers things called canned responses. Um, this, I did want to be able to show you an example of having an email template and emailing it in. Um, however, that was actually something that um, my coworker had set up, and so I unfortunately don't have that demonstration, but in our next slide has um, the beginning setup of that. Um, this is another way where you also can, oops, jumping back, sorry, um, create custom contacts for your folders, um, utilizing your the email in capability to, um, using the email in capability to um, make a contact for a folder name. So making it easier to send that information in. Another way is by using the favorites capability to create a to-do list of your own. Coming back to items that you perhaps aren't able to look at immediately or pieces that are also frequently referenced. So when you're, um, you do have a document that has consistent information that you need to have, you can obviously bookmark that and save it on your browser, but Central Desktop also has the capability so that you can have a list of frequently accessed information. It also allows you to see some recent activities so you can see where you've been um, as you're working, if you're working quickly and perhaps not um, keeping track of specific documents that you're accessing. The final area is also being able to reflect and look back on things as an individual user. So custom reports and saving them for future use. As an individual, you're able to configure them based on your own workspace membership, looking at the information that's most meaningful to you, and save them for frequent run. Um, and then they can also be shared with your team. shows here, this is a really simplified email template in that it has a subject line that has um, weekly meeting notes and a placeholder for the date. It also then has the subject heading that can then simply be filled in based on what that information is. Um, a template can be absolutely much more complex um, and it also in this example has um, makes use of a system email address that you'll see the longer string. However, this has a name on it called Design Folder. So using our email in capability, you're able to save a folder's email address as a contact. So giving it a name, associating it with the workspace as the company. So I can call this one the Go Design Workspace. And so when I want to email in content to this workspace, Within files and discussion, I can take a look at the Go Design folder and see that this has that example of that email that was sent in. And so this is just the raw template. However, this is filled in on a weekly basis. You're able to save that information that you created using that consistent format, saving yourself a small amount of time. Um, and this is something, again, that as an individual, it's not a huge time save, but it is cutting away bits of time that perhaps were unnecessary in even just generating the beginning of an email. Is that the discussion that you just showed or is that a... So this is an online document. Oh, online. Yeah. Um, discussions can be started via email um, and that also allows for um, you to be able to use this template in that way as well. Um, so the way this also breaks it out is for that same workspace, I can have a contact for each folder that I have within the workspace. So I can have one for my client folder and my design folder and for my project folder. So when I know I'm creating content, whether it be an online document, a discussion, a file that has attachments, I can email that in as well. Um, I can simply begin typing in design folder and that will come up as a contact populating the two addresses. Go to that folder in Central Desktop, or does it then also notify members of the workspace? 
So the one instance where it would also notify the members of the workspace is if it's a discussion and you have the setting in place to automatically subscribe all members when the discussion is emailed in. Um, apart from that, any emailed in content can have a person's name added to subscribe them, but it's not a common practice. Um, and so typically it's a way for just adding content and then um, communication is added afterwards by modifying the subscribers. That's actually something I think if I can follow up with you afterwards, okay. um, we can. But um, since that actually sounds like it might need some support troubleshooting as well. Okay. So that's a great question. <laughs> so um, in addition to this, it's, it's not limited to only adding in um, files. As, as you said, you can email in tasks as well. And so what would happen is just simply identifying the address that you would want and then saving that as a contact. Um, and so this is a way for you to focus on the most frequent contacts or folders that you're interacting with so that um, it's a way to make the system work for you. And it doesn't have to be done all at once. You can watch the patterns as they happen and make those changes and um, improvements as you're working. So the favorites area and how that can be helpful um, has to do with the way that you are able to mark and sort your content. So throughout the product, you'll see the favorites icon here, where you're able to mark files, landing pages, specific folders as a favorite so that you can return to it when you want to access it. Um, your favorites list is something that you can sort and modify, so it doesn't have to be permanent. You don't have to mark something as a favorite and it lives there forever. Um, so one of the, the common ways that we see this used is to make it almost like a to-do list or um, items to be read. So when you're having a lot of things sent to you via email and you want to be able to review them, but you perhaps have a more pressing task, marking it as a favorite and coming back to it at the end of the day, removing any piece that you know, you've reviewed no longer needs to be kept as a favorite. Um, it's a way to have that as sort of a pin board. This area also gives you your last 10 pages that you've viewed, um, which I actually find to be really helpful when you are working really quickly, perhaps have a lot of tabs open, um, and close one and can't specifically remember how you found it or where you found it. Um, so if you're cognizant of being able to go back in that sort of 10, 10 interaction period, you'll be able to go directly back to it. Um, as you can see, this shows um, searches as well. So if you're on the search page and you're looking and you go, okay, what did I search for first? Then you can go back and review it in this way. Um, this can also then be ordered. So if you decide that there are files that you want to maintain and have lived there for an indefinite amount of time, you can prioritize them so that they live at the top. Last area is reporting. So um, every user has access to my report. And this is something that is um, tuned to your specific workspace access. And so every person is able to filter reports based on their own membership, but they tend to be ones that are related to project management and um, the life of an existing project. So this is actually more helpful for those that are tend to be administrators and are, are doing the reporting on um, the activities. Every report in my reports can actually be saved, so you don't have to continue to go back and pre-configure a report each time that you need it. So I'm taking a look at that. In my reports, you're able to go down the left-hand side, selecting the report filters that you want. 
or from the top you can see there's an area that on the, ver the very top has our system canned reports and then below that has any report that has been created by myself and saved. And so if I as an administrator need to take a look at the um, completed tasks and milestones in a particular workspace over a certain amount of time, I can simply come in as part of my role and select the um, pre-configured report and take a look at that. So if I want to look at what's been completed, this is a great way for me to go and complement my team for what has been done um, and not just a way of, of looking at what has not yet been done. So it's a way to also slice things up and provide the information, say to a client that says, here's our progress this week, or um, to an individual employee and says, you know, here's what you've done so far, here's the gap, or whatever the combination may be. From a then saved report, you can always go and reconfigure and modify those settings. So it has kept the configuration along the left, so you can see it was just for this one workspace. Continuing down, I can change the frequency, I can change the information that I want, and once I change it, changes to incomplete, I then have the option to save it again. So now after running this report, the configuration has changed, so I then have the option to save it and add it to my list of newly saved reports. So um, this is a great way to go through, play around, make all the reports you want, and save them. So spending perhaps an hour of work, which will save you then over time, that time, each, each time you need the report to run it. Once the report has been generated, you'll then have the ability to export or email those reports, which is a great way to send the information that you see on screen to say an, a completely non-member or external party that you may be working with. Um, the information is, is safe to share, but they don't have access back to the system. So um, by being able to email them that report, you have the option to send them as either an attachment or embedded directly in the email that content. Um, so these are again ways to, rather than recreate a report that you're sending out externally, take the information you already have send that directly to who may need it. Um, and this would be another option where you can make use of that email address and email this back into your system if you wanted. Um, you would need to grab that address to do so, but you can then add the content back into your workspace and share this report with the rest of your team. to the flight crew and how a team can find some shortcuts. So one of the first ways is through workspace templates. Workspace templates are the universal way for pre-configuring the structure for your workspace and then making it something that you can simply cookie cut and create from then on. Um, as you're working and creating your projects, you're going to find small tweaks that you want to make in the structure, improvements to the file structure, um, additional layout changes that may be necessary, changing up the tabs, um, and this is a way to have a standard template that you can then make your modifications to so that every cookie, every project that you cut after that has all those same requirements. Um, what we're showing here is the workspace creation wizard and the template management. So in addition to our system templates that are offered, you're able to manage which of your custom templates are available to your users to pick and create workspaces from. Um, we definitely recommend making use of the descriptions. As you can see in the box that's highlighted, there's a little, just a small description of what is in that template and what you use it for. So if the template name isn't telling enough, can be, this is for project X, which has requirements Z and D. Um, so making it specific and telling, because um, over time you may find with project variations that you end up with a few different template configurations. Um, and these are also ways that you can set up your members that will be part of a project, all the tasks, the task assignments, have any base files that you might have, those can all live in uh, workspace templates. 
They're not actively used spaces, so any tasks that are assigned won't be on the user's um, visibility or on their radar, but can be set up in such a way so that when a project is started with very small modifications, you're able to actually have the entire project lined up for you um, with all the dates in place. In addition to workspace templates, um, one of the next ways that uh, additional shortcuts can be made for a team is through the use of workflow and workflow rules. Um, workflow actually brings in the ability to send an email notification, create tasks, or perform an action, most universally, um, allowing for modifications in files and discussions and databases. So what I wanted to pull up was actually a workflow template. So when creating a workflow template, you want to um, create a message that is going to be meaningful to the user who receives that email notification or task assignment. And so, um, as you can see here, we have an example notification, and I'll pull that up as well in a larger view. Um, but we've set up a notifica or this notification in such a way that it tells the user who receives it that a new project request with the title has been um, what the action is, and then the workspace name. It walks through what the reason is that they're getting the notification, and then also lays out all the information that is contained in this instance in a database record. So it pulls those values in from the database record itself, providing it to the user in their email inbox, or in the task when they're in the workspace, so when they need to act on it, they don't have to have two windows open or navigate between the database and their task. They have all the information they need in a single location. There we go. It also still gives you the link back to the UR, to the record, so that if you want to navigate there and have a full view, you can. But it also then explains in a clear way what the user needs to do with it. So please triage this request and assign the appropriate team to begin. So then these values, go notes, create a directory and team, while it has the placeholder, if any are there, would be populated, but typically in the, this use case is empty, so it's to show that this is what they need to fill in. Um, some additional uses for files and discussion workflow tends to be a file room maintenance, so um, a way to trigger notifications that say, um, this file or these, these files have been in the system for over two weeks, <coughs> over four weeks, um, and really should be moved to a folder, or um, should be archived because they are no longer necessary. Um, it can also be utilized as a simple file approval process, so based on the status of a file or whether a file is moved in or out of a folder, you're able to notify the next person in an approval process that it's their turn. Um, so just a few different ways of taking a look at that. So in file for discussions to navigate to workflow, you'll just need to be on the folder level. And as an administrator, you'll just click on the workflow icon. And from here, we'll have a list of all of your workflow rules available to you. So the example that I used for the new project request, which happens to be inactive since we're not using it. This one shows that um, it happens to be a database record, but when a, a database record is added or in the evening it's checked, it's going to send the following notification to any assigned users. Um, you, also, you have the option of, um, for task assignments, not only notifying users explicitly, but any based on variables within the database. Um, you're also able to send these copy messages to users, but to insert the variable, let's just scroll back up, you would select from the notification area, you'll see here that it says insert variable, and I'll have here the option every single um, record or field that is available in my record. 
And so I can pick out any specific piece and highlight it, and I can repeat these variables throughout my template if I want. Um, but these are ways to use the system to help populate the information <coughs> that you're providing to your user. Um, I'm sorry, can you? Is there a way to tell it to send the email to everyone who's a current member of the workspace of the database to tell it? So uh, that should be an option. So with our, we recently made an update to our um, user pickers. That was one of the things that we talked about, which now allows you not only to type in individuals' names, but you can also always search for individuals um, and groups. And so um, in this instance, because it is database related, all the members is not an option um, because this is a, a database related one. So it's going to give me all the members of the workspace. So I could come in here and select them. But then when new members are added, I would need to come back and modify um, my workflow to add new members that are part of the workspace. Um, but that is good feedback for being able to select all the members of the space for that. All right. Perfect. So beyond these modifications that can be used for workflow, we actually have uh, one of our customers who is a longstanding customer, Jason Deal of CBS, who is the AVID supervisor and he's actually going to be able to give you a little bit more context as to what that is um, and how they work for um, with CBS to utilize workflow rules. As this has been a piece that our system has offered their team and has been a long-standing feature that they've made use of. So, I'll turn it over to Jason. I'm ready. Everybody. My name is Jason Deal. I am from CBS, the CBS On Air Promotions Department. And excuse me while I try to get this on me in here. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Excellent. Let me give you a little background. We've been using Central Desktop since around 2007 when my boss just suddenly came in one day and said, This is what we're using. Roll it out. So, my job as an Avid supervisor is well, is any, does anybody here know what an Avid is? Okay, it's a computer that happens to uh, edit video and film. It's the, if you know Final Cut Pro, Avid is a step above it. It is what all the studios use to professionally edit film and video. My job is to make sure the thing works. But in that job title, my job is also to do any other technical thing or kind of like support for the CBS Audio Promotions Department. So. We cover a vast array of all kinds of technical issues. We make DVDs. I'm not going to bore you with my, my, my resume, but suffice it to say, we cover a lot of areas. So every year we have a, in May, we announce our new fall schedule. You're all probably very familiar with CBS shows, and you know when those announcements are made. That's called the upfronts. In New York, they have a show where they call in all the advertisers into Carnegie Hall and they sit them down and they show cut down versions of all the new shows that CBS is going to be airing in the fall and all the ad advertisers then go to a bar, get drunk, and they buy ad time in those shows. <laughs> Assuming that the show is going to be a hit. So we pray that the show is going to be a hit so that we make lots of money off of them. Part of this process is we produce a lot of shows that never see the light of day. So for example, this last um, up front, we only picked up four shows, but we shot 16, I think. So there's a lot of shows out there that you guys just never have a chance to see, and some of them are awesome, and some of them really, really suck, so that's why they don't get picked up. In this process, we have these 16 shows, but we can't edit these shortened versions all in-house. We have to expand it outside of CBS, so we have about 20 vendors that we just have on call, and we just, at a moment's notice, we will call them up, this is how we used to do it, we would call them up and say, you're going to edit the cut down of a particular pilot, and we need to see the result in two days. 
So this happens for a two week period. So it's a very, very intense time. Everybody's very focused on it. So you can imagine that the stress level is very high. For me, it's incredibly so because if anything fails technically, the whole house of cards can crumble. Central Desktop came in in a, in a perfect time because we were working in LA. It was the first year that we worked in LA. We used to do everything in New York. And we used to do it all by Excel. And we would fill out an Excel sheet and we'd, we'd email it out to the team. So once we got it into Central Desktop, everybody knew exactly where to go to find the information they needed to have in order to continue with what they needed to do. What I'm going to tell you now is, if that didn't blow your mind already, the concept that we just did this last upfront is so technically advanced that even I have no idea how it truly works. I just sat with the guy who did all the programming at a computer, and then I got all the paths on the back for it. So, what happened is, this is one of our workspaces. This is the one for the upfront. I know you guys in the back can read every single word on the screen, but there's two things. There's a lot of information going on, but it looks very simple. There's two things. All of the final files are over here, so we just, I needed a quick way for people to get into it. Really what I want you to focus on is this. It's just a simple database that I put on the home page, and it's asking for four pieces of information from the creative director. The creative director is the person in charge of a particular show, and they'll, they will get an assignment to say, we need four different versions of a particular pilot cut down, send them out. They will send them out, and what they do is they go to this database, they choose the project, so let's say for this last one it was elementary. They choose a, a vendor. We have lots of vendors, we have 20, so they just choose that from the pull down, and then they choose the level of activity. Are they going to view it? Are they going to view it and write a script? Are they going to view it, write a script, and do a cut down? They would choose that, and then I just need to know who the creative director is. Once they made those selections, we had another computer that just sat and through the API of Central Desktop, watch the database for new records. Now I'm going to really get really complicated, so I'm going to go through it really fast, and I'm going to probably lose some of you, so I apologize. When it found a new record, it would go to other databases that I had already built to get other pieces of information. One piece of information was, is this the right one? Yes. So, <coughs> excuse me, this is a diagram I had to create for the guy who programmed it to show what is going on between everything? So I have, here's a database that's transferring information to another database, which is transferring information to another database, and this is the computer that's controlling it all. It's called Orchestrator. Um, in the roadmap talk that we had earlier today, Christy had mentioned uh, Aspera, which is a fast-growing company that makes the fast-moving file transfer system that we happen to use and which Central Desktop is testing right now. They also make this computer called the Orchestrator, which is just a workflow machine. You program it, and it will do exactly what you need to do. So what it's doing is it is watching. It's the brains of the entire thing, and it is going into one database, picking out information, going into another database, picking out information, and putting both of those database information into the third database where a lot of things are happening. One of which is the show media that the vendor needs is placed onto a server. I know guys, this is, I'm losing you here, but another thing is emails are sent out to that vendor to, to let them know you have media that you can download. And then once all that is done, Orchestrator goes back and updates the database in Central Desktop. So that at any particular time, any of us can go to that one database and see exactly what is going on. To the point that my boss, who is usually going insane from the stress of this two-week period, had absolutely nothing to do this last year when we first employed this system. He was sitting around just joking where usually he'd be yelling. So it was really, really good for me. This is a screen of orchestrator. This is the this is the workflow that we employ. Now, I know all of you completely understand what's going on here, but just, I'm just giving you an example of how information is taken from a third party uh, system and just taking central desktop data and passing it through and doing something that really 
will save you so much time and energy and get so much accomplished that it will change your life. And that's what really what workflow is all about. So, so this is Jason. No, they're all central. Well, there are databases that are required by Orchestrator, but those are MySQL, yeah. and I don't access them. Other than that, because I need, at a moment's notice, if we get a new vendor, which we often do, right in the middle of the two-week period, I need to go into a place and put in that information. So we used it all in central desktop. I had a vendor database. I had a, um, a project or, or pilot database, and then I had the main database, which was the, we called it the, the project, it was, it was a PAR database, Project Assignment Record. And that was the, they're all child databases to the parent database of the PAR. So, and everything just fell into place. So. Okay. This is a great example of, prior to this, they had availability to only central desktop workflow. So taking the resources you have and adapting them and finding ways to um, make the system work for you. Um, so additionally, finding ways that central desktop databases can integrate with other systems that you have to, again, create shortcuts and shorten the process. So the last section we have is for the company administrator or the captain of the ship, ways that you can find solutions that are going to save your entire organization time. So one of those first ways is task list templates. So Looking back at your project management piece, I'm sure you'll have found way, uh, projects that were repeated, completely the same steps over and over and over again. And rather than entering them in each time, it's identifying those and creating pre-configured templates that you can then just create and put in place, um, simplifying the process to only a few clicks rather than quite a few more. Knowing your audience. Um, by putting in place custom fields, utilizing workspace, workspace properties, as well as time tracking, ways that you can put in more meaningful information for you as an administrator when you're perhaps looking for a employee that has a certain skill. By adding that as a custom um, property, you're able to then search on that or create reports that will tell you that information more quickly. Adding information that you use in perhaps a separate time capture um, reporting mechanism, adding that into the central desktop time reporting so that you have all that information in one place. And then the last one is less is always more. So finding patterns in the groups of people that